Hello, my name is Michał Bordukiewicz and I will talk about air as an environment for the functional analysis of proteins. So with the outline we are actually skipping the whole thing of, of the functional analysis of proteins we want to discuss in details, but we will focus on two phases of the, our model development and deployment. Uh, first and foremost I am a scientist, so I want a model which would be a I want to produce a model which will be a functional model that will work that, that, that could be seen as a supplement to the publication when I'm presenting its pros and cons. So I'm trying to develop models in a very reproducible manner, but also I want these models to be easy to share and to deploy. Uh, so there's few words about functional, uh, um, uh, functional analysis of proteins. In this very case, we are trying to use uh, biological uh, data, uh, in my case mostly primary sequences of proteins and uh, or of proteins, so the vectors of um, amino acids, to create a model which is predicting uh, which is predicting in a supervised manner some labels of these sequences. I know this sequence before the training. I, I, know, I know these labels before the training. So let's go. So how to develop such model? Firstly, we need to process our sequence and there are a multitude of packages uh, that could easily process your biological sequences. Among the uh, current based packages, I want to present, I want to highlight APE, Biosec and Sekinar, especially Biosec. They are allowing easy processing of the biological sequences and Biosec is doing it in a very tidy way. And also our package tidysq, right currently on CRAN, it's country, sorry, on GitHub is able to do this prediction in a very fast, very efficient manner because of the lot of C++ under the hood. So later we are developing the models and here we have, n we, we cannot really mm, do much besides using uh, one of these three excellent packages. We sometimes decide to opt out from uh, any of them when we have a model which is a bit more complicated. But still, when we are when we are looking for the for a potential model, they are streamlining our our work. And the last issue is this: our, is our reproducibility, the reproducibility of the of the model. So please use targets or use former version of Drake and Renf to ensure that your code can be, that your code can be run by others and one of the examples could be the code of the my one of my software packages ambgram it will it will show uh, well here and there in this publication further so we have our great model and it's time to deploy it so the is so because in the functional analysis of uh, proteins we are often aiming at biologists which are less are fluent I like the most of uh, I like the most uh, uh, making these models available as uh, shiny web applications. So I am do doing the shiny web app. Uh, it has uh, and the important part is that either the biologist can paste sequences here on the, in this in this field, or he can uh, submit the FASTA file uh, from uh, from this uh, from uh, from from its hard drive. So th there are two ways of submitting the data it's to make it a bit more convenient. And of course, example is the shiny app of the engram. And one last part is the deployment of the R package because if you do if you are trying to if if you are trying to make a package with your model, you of course creating a predict function that will work with your trained model and so on and so on. And it all seems easy, but sometimes models are too large for CRAN because CRAN accepts only packages up to the size of five megabytes. In this case, you can make an external dependency, external GitHub package with model. And on, so on CRAN, we are hosting the mgram package, but the mgram package is depending on the mgram model, which can be Mm, download it from the web. Please check our model, uh, mgram model and mgram to see how it's done. And this is all time that I have, so I want to thank our my group. And if you need any help with that, please reach me using my email. Bye bye.